Welcome back to Great Britain with me, Golden Self, here in Hearts of Iron 4, the bedrock of the Allies. Or is it? We don't know. I'm playing with a historical AI. That's the central gimmick of this campaign, and I'm sticking to it. So, we've got uh, Denmark, for example, that I'd love to go to war with or something, you know? Like, let's just see what happens. Um, Denmark maybe goes fascist or something, and then we go kill Denmark. I, I don't know. Uh, Maybe, uh, and by the way, check this out. Look at how Germany got so wrecked in this war that they actually lost Holstein. Um, I mean, man, or Schleswig-Holstein in this case. I guess they merged that up or something. I, I don't know much about uh, Danish geography. And actually, I think that, uh, as I recall, in the current present day, actually Holstein is divided in two between Denmark and Germany in a weird way. Um, in a sort of non-historical way, or non-historically familiar way, but now it's sort of the way it is. So we actually have some extra factories that I didn't look at and extra dockyards from last time. Because I just sort of built some fact. Uh, did I actually start building fa- oh my god, I did. I went way overboard. Um, but that's fine. Um, we actually have extra factories right now that I- I guess I'll keep making them, and uh, once we get to like- Because once we start doing this, we're gonna have to start trading with some of those away. So let's just, uh, take a look here. We still have more- We have- let's just take all of them and put them into, um, into planes, maybe? The thing is, I'm quite confident that I will have air superiority. No matter what. Uh, the Germans cook up. And especially as time goes on. Um, how many of these bombers do I actually have in reserve? None. Okay. And how many uh, am I building per... Oh, wow. 2.3. So, we need a lot more military factories as well. And as you can see, we're already insufficient resources on... Are we? Wait, where are we? Insufficient resources on... Oh, light cruisers. Uh, I thought I didn't... I thought I said I didn't want you. Um, destroyers, building 18 destroyers. I think we're going to build more than that. But we're going to upgrade these to the newer model. Um, oh, wait, they already are the newer model. Wait a minute. There's another one, too, though. Hang on. Uh, no, oh, wrong button. Oh, I guess not. Okay. So we need to get the, um, the next battleship class before I start building those. And um, I think I'm going to get the next carrier class before I build those. And, and submarines, I'll go ahead and build some um, right now. Because they're fairly cheap, relatively speaking. And um, let's go ahead and just take our dockyards, um, all of them. And put them into submarines for now. We'll upgrade those soon. As you can see, we now need oil and... Let's go ahead and get some from whom? Someone with oil? Not that's rubber. Someone with oil who hopefully, uh, let's say the British Raj, right? They're my, this way. I don't have to worry about, oh, but, and I don't have to give them any civilian factories for it. That's the best part of having my colonies. So who else is there? Any other puppets? Uh, I wish that was an option on here. Uh, Canada. Canada has one oil. I want it. Oh no, they are making me pay a civilian factory. Really? So how come I didn't have to with the British Raj? They're this, they're of equal rank. Oh, they're not. Oh, okay. The British Raj is my only puppet. The other ones are actually just allies. Uh, they're in the allies faction. Okay. Um, let me check something then. Do I get a discount with the allies? Uh, let me take a look at this again. Um, they don't say anything like that. So, whatever. Um, well, we need a bunch more oil now. Let's see. Then in that case, I might as well do it with the United States because, uh, make up the difference with them because they're not gonna not be my ally. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna find a way to keep them my ally. Um, you never know though. They could go. They're not gonna go hostile to me unless, uh, unless I go communist. And I haven't decided yet whether to do that. I don't have the political power to decide either way because you see, in order to go communist, the only way I can find to do it is to hire or fascist or whatever, is to hire a fascist demagogue or a communist revolutionary. And if I want to bonus boost uh, democracy, I could get this guy as well. But we have nobody trying to make us fascist or communist right now, as far as I know. So, and I think over time there's ideology drift, but we are actually protected from that by uh, British stoicism. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, if you can meet, wait, 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 let's read that again. If you can meet with triumph 
and disaster, and treat those two impostors just the same, yours is the earth, and everything that's in it, and which is more, you will be a man, my son. I don't know what that is uh, quoting. I probably ought to. Um, it may well be Churchill or something, but I, I uh, don't know, I'm afraid. Not that much of a buff on World War II. In preparation for this series, in preparation for this game, I watched the entire 26 episodes of The World at War, the 1973 uh, uh, British uh, World War II documentary featuring many interviews with uh, soldiers and commanders of the conflict and featuring tactical breakdowns of key battles as well as a very human touch. A great, great documentary series, I highly recommend it. You can find it on Amazon streaming at least, and I don't know, maybe on Netflix too, I'm not sure. Um, what is going on? Oh, we're looking at North America. Um, okay, Canada. See, now do I have any other... Um, who else is there? Oceania, yeah. Um, what about... Uh, no, there's no oil in uh, Australia, apparently. You know, I can make this much easier for myself by just going to resource map mode and taking a look at the colonies. Um, that's not where I have colonies. It's, there's a whole other hemisphere that I kind of forgot about there. Um, uh, New Zealand has nothing. And they're not my puppets, actually. They are only allies, so it doesn't really matter if I trade with them. Netherlands. I actually have a tiny bit of oil here in Borneo, um, which is nice. Actually, not a, and, and a, a substantial amount of rubber. All my rubber needs are met forever. I'm exporting a ton. Half of my rubber. Um, and one thing that we're going to want to do is change our economic focus, export focus, to um, free trade at some point, because that will increase our factory output and get... Uh, it does also send more resources to market, however, so that is that is a trade-off. So you can use less resources, but you um, are making more stuff with the resources you have, with the resources you do get. Um, it's less important, less of a priority to me than something like mobilization or uh, uh, conscription laws. We definitely need to change this ASAP. As soon as I get 150 political power, I probably will do this. Um, and. This should basically, I guess it does cost political power to go disarmed. Um, I was going to say maybe it should be free, but because it's such a downgrade, but... Um, all this does is give you twice as much recruitable population from 1.25 or whatever I have, 1.5 to 2.5, not even twice as much, 1% more. And uh, it's going to change it from 588 to like, it becomes 800, I think is what it was last time I tried this. Uh, wrong direction. So... I also spent a lot of time building garrisons for my colonies, like I spent a, quite a bit on putting army down here, an army in Malaya, and I don't know if that's a good idea or not because it costs a lot of, I didn't have the manpower for it, you see. Um, so for now I just will focus on, excuse me, getting my stuff built up, making factories, making uh, goods, not goods, but uh, you can see here that we're making... Um, 16 toasters and two uh, we're trading two things two factories f away 16 factories are being used for um, for making toasters or whatever consumer goods um, and here you can get another breakdown that shows you in, in more uh, traditional paradox form um, what we are making what we are losing in terms of factories we need to build keep building them we just built one it seems um, or did we? No, it, this hasn't yet been built. It's only been like two weeks of the game. Yeah, low manpower, I know. I know. Are we reinforcing anybody right now? Um, let's see if that would be in here, I think. Now, why are you there's such a weak fighting strength, I wonder? Is it because of your low... You don't have enough equipment? Let's see here. Yeah, waiting for 510 infantry equipment. So we definitely need to make more guns. And... Uh, that's going to mean more factories. We're only making 16.5 per day, and as you can see, we have a. It will take us at this rate 887 days to fill the void. Oh, King George has already died. It was just as fast as I expected it to be, and we will get Edward, I believe. And then I had an event where he abdicated in the last event, um, campaign, which is historical. But I don't know if that happens all the time. Let's grab all these units here. Uh, these are actually all regulars. These are my main army, the British army. These aren't like garrison forces or anything. So let's give him a commander. Um, we can already pick Field Marshal Montgomery, who has an unlimited, you can support an unlimited amount of troops as a Field Marshal. Um, I find that interesting for Montgomery, but I guess he did command quite a few troops in North Africa. And uh, in, you know, Italy and all that. 
Um, Alan Brook. Um, or we could get a general. And there's a level 5 general right here who doesn't have any special traits. Uh, here's a panzer leader, though, who we'll have to save him for later. Neil Ritchie. Alan Cunningham is a familiar name. I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's such a generic sounding name. Trickster, uh, reconnaissance, okay. But yeah, looking at Montgomery's traits, he's a logistics wizard. So he is great with low supply conditions, such as North Africa. And he has uh, an offensive doctrine. I find that to be kind of odd. He's most famous for the Battle of El Alamein, which was sort of a, basically a defensive battle. Um, so that's interesting. But then again, he did uh, help, you know, was involved with the invasion of Sicily and all that. So, great. I don't know then who to pick. I guess it should be Field Marshal, Mar Field Marshal Montgomery, and I'll split off smaller armies as necessary. On the other hand, this guy's level 5. He's got offensive doctrine and defensive doctrine. You know, I think I should save him for the colonies, because he's a logistics wizard. So maybe what instead would be better is Alan Brook for the home army. And make them uh, just garrison for now. Uh, that's the fallback line, not the right button. Garrison. Everything. Uh, wait a minute. Get back here. I went and opened something I didn't mean to open. They'll all scramble around the garrison, everything up. While I'm past the time here, basically doing this, because uh, no, that does not. Have, that's not a separate province. Wow, even this is part of that. Amazing. So you might think Orkney would be a separate state, but it's not. I'm sure it's a separate province, however. All right, and that'll do it. So. Yeah, it's a separate province. Uh, no, no, it's not. Is it? I don't know. I one thing that bugs me about this is that uh, I can't seem a I seem can't seem to find the names of the provinces anywhere. I think they really need to add that in. It just says province, and it seems to me right there is where it should say, uh, um, you know, what the name of the province is. All right, we've gotten limited rearmament. We can do motorized army. Sorry, I was just turning off my uh, my heater down on the floor. We can do motorized army, but uh, but the problem is, and as much as I need motorized infantry divisions, they are they cost manpower that I do not have right now. So instead, I could go air defense. Oh, we can't do that. You need more world tension to do these ones. I forgot. So instead, I could do reinforce the empire, which will increase our national unity, which sucks right now because our king is Edward the Eighth. And he is a playboy, and he's not expected to follow the, uh, he's not expected to, um, obey the Prime Minister so much. And so, and I kind of skipped over that, um, pop-up that talked about that, but I, I apologize for that. Um, or we could do home defense. Uh, I think instead we will do this. It will give us some experience that we can use to, uh, change around our units as well. Um... And it will give us national unity that we so desperately need right now. On the other hand, as soon as Edward abdicates, hopefully, hoping that he does, um, to marry an American woman uh, of common descent, uh, hopefully uh, he will. We will get, and hopefully that will happen, and that will give us a more popular figurehead in the form of uh, George the Sixth, who is uh, starts, who's born as Prince Albert, I believe. Um, if I'm remembering my British history correctly, and slash the pop-up that I read not too long ago. We're not using our dock guards for much good. So um, let's make another... Oh, I see what happened. is because our submarine finished. Well, we are researching a new submarine right now, are we not? We gotta learn these hotkeys. W, Q, W, yeah, okay. Um, we are not researching a new submarine. Um, so let's... Hang on one second. Yes, so... Um, we're not researching the new submarines, so we need to get... Should we build more subs or not? I think we just build level 2 ships. We're, we're, we're not going to be challenged in the ocean, unless it's by Japan. Or maybe France, apparently. Uh, but no, I doubt it. Um, we are gaining one per day, and I want to keep the U.S. and France happy with me, but you improving relations happens so fast. It's like one point per day. It's so much faster than you four. 
that uh, I don't see the point in doing it now, and it ticks down quite rapidly as well. So, I'm not going to spend any of my uh, points on that just yet. These 10 is what it costs. You have to spend money, spend uh, political power to gain uh, improved relations, which makes some sense. You can also boost the Democratic Party popularity, which if they start really swinging toward communists, I might do, or maybe I'll let them. Maybe I'll let them. Um, let's see here. We don't really have any factories available, but we do have dockyards, right? So let's just go ahead and keep building destroyers with these. Um, no, 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 no. Not so much. How many do I have? 15 out of 19? Or should I go ahead and start a new... Uh... Thing. Perhaps carrier... Uh, we don't have the modern carriers. GHI class. Okay, we have the modern destroyers. Or most current destroyers, at least. Um... I'm not gonna build convoys. We have quite a few. We're gonna be able to defend them. I guess I'll just use my remaining, um, 18, 19. There we go. Go ahead and unpause that. Uh, I find that the, the factory is where the game is won and lost. The produ production side. Um, so, you know, it's hard to find a balance between everything. You don't want to be producing too much early on. Especially with our limited mobilization, because we will just constantly be trading away factories for resources. And we'll just be slowly slogging along to get stuff built. And, um, you know, I wonder if I shouldn't be building less fighters and more, uh, infantry equipment on account of the very slow pace at which we're building infantry equipment. At the current rate, it would take us 681 days to reinforce our armies. And, um, the fighters we have are needs met because we don't have any fighter, uh, we're not, um, we're not lacking in fighters in the air wings that we have. Um, you can only create air wings from existing planes, you can't create anything like an air division the same way you can with infantry, with armies. Which is, to me, kind of odd. It's weird um, that you can't do that with armies and navies. You can't, uh, you can customize them in terms of their variants. Like, um, if I go to Inner War Fighter, and then I go here, I can customize it and give it more, you know, various stuff. But since the next model is just going to come along pretty soon anyway, I think I won't. Uh, on the other hand, it would be much cheaper to do that in many situations and improve it, your souped-up fighter. Uh, improve your fighter, then maybe go for the new, newer model if you are uh, getting your asses handed to you and you're behind in tech, or maybe um, maybe you can't afford to build the new one, or maybe you can't, uh, maybe you don't have time to wait for production efficiency to tick up. On the other hand, with ships, there is no production efficiency for some reason. Oh, and let's have these guys go to uh, London, not to um, not to Malta, which is where they were going last time. Uh, kind of odd. Uh, how did I get here? Oh, I know where I am. Uh, also, I could send these to a specific fleet, but I'm just gonna make them go to that one, just to be their own fleet, and I'll decide where they go later. Uh, anything in Malta right now that shouldn't be there? Yeah, here it is. Here's the subs I just built, and the destroyers I just built. So let's send them back to, uh, London, merge them up with, uh, with the new ones as they come in. Alright. So they're on their way. No, I think it's control click. Yeah, control drag will automatically select naval units. We have a bit of a garrison guy here. Let's have him garrison that. Uh, just in case Italy decides... Uh... Oh, he doesn't have a leader, of course. I think I should give all of the... Um... Um, these guys should be their own theater. So let's pick all of them up and call this the... Hello. We gotta make a new army from you guys. And we're gonna make a new theater, and call this the, uh, uh, what do we call this? Middle East or North Africa? I'm not sure which is more appropriate. I guess they are Middle East. Let's just call it the Middle Eastern. Middle East Theater. We'll count North Africa as the Middle East for now. Um, we'll call this... The East African Theater, if we can't select these armies. So this way I'll have a better idea of where all my units are. Um, new army. New theater. And I can't drag, click drag, don't know, ask me why. Uh, East Africa. We have some Britain unique music, by the way, playing right now. Great. And these guys are all boats? No. Okay. 
Um, new army? New theater? And this will be... West Africa? Okay. And, uh... There goes my timer for the episode. Well, I'll take the rest of the time uh, off ca between episodes to go ahead and make some more theaters, and uh, you get the idea. Um, this way, when I make new armies to send to the colonies or whatever, um, I will be able to quickly see how many are there, and uh, have a better idea of what's going on in different areas. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, see you next time. Um, and by the way, yeah, liking is very, very, very important. If you like the video, like it. Uh, with the button that you have to click for some reason. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. And the comments, they're gonna help. Please leave them if you have feedback, suggestions. Bye-bye.